Hi, my name is Jordan Green, and today I'm going to present my interior design capstone project. The name of my project and building is Hope's Haven. Although I do not have the ability to showcase every room of my design, my goal today is to show you that a building of this proportion is possible and should be created to help autistic adults. Before I begin, I would like to briefly introduce myself. My personal design philosophy is to help those who can't necessarily help themselves and to create spaces that have a positive and healthy impact on their end users. I am an interior design major and a communication minor at Mount Mary University. This is my older brother, Doug. He is autistic and he is also nonverbal. He is considered severely autistic and he requires constant supervision. I decided to design an autistic living facility to help create a space that could positively affect individuals just like my brother. Hope's Haven is owned by a family ownership group. This is their first autistic living facility and building. Hope's Haven has created an entire community with the understanding of how unique and special every autistic individual is. Their mission is to create a place where autistic adults can live and flourish in a unique, healthy, safe, and stable environment. They like to say, we wouldn't change these special individuals for the world, but we will change the world for them. Do you realize you put the fan backwards? The intentions and goals of this project are to create an affordable autistic living community that provides the residents with the ability to live fulfilling and enriching lives. This community's goal is to create a space where autistic individuals can live or go during the day to help these individuals with therapies, education, and doctor oversight. This project will focus solely on creating a design for autistic adults who fall within the level two and three of the autistic spectrum. Before I dive into my building's design, I would like to provide a brief overview of autism and the importance of a facility like Hope's Haven. Autism is a complex developmental disability. The symptoms that are commonly associated with autism are repetitive behaviors, social skill issues, speech issues, or no speech development at all. Doctors can now accurately diagnose autism in children by the ages of two or four, 
one out of 66 Americans have some form of autism. And unfortunately, autism at this point cannot be cured. And the most common form of treatment is treating the symptoms with medications and therapies. Although there are a lot of individuals with autism, there are not many facilities specifically for autistic adults. There are three levels of the autism spectrum. People with level one on the autism spectrum are usually labeled as high functioning autistic individuals. They typically have atypical social interactions, low amount of restrictive and repetitive behaviors, and normal to above normal intelligence. Those with level two tend to have social dysfunctions, some behavioral problems, and some difficulty with verbal communication. Individuals with level three have more impaired social skills behavioral extremes, impaired mental or cognitive functioning. However, contrary to the label that doctors have placed on them as low functioning, these individuals have the ability to be very gifted in certain aspects. Currently, there is a severe lack of programs and resources for autistic adults, and even more so for severely autistic adults. With only a small amount of programs and aid for autistic adults, their care falls on their families. Autistic adults can turn to the government for some federally funded aid, but these programs only provide a small amount of the assistance that is needed, and not all doctors that specialize in autism accept these programs. Hope's Havens end users will be considered multi-generational with individuals ranging from 21 and up. This building will specifically be for those who have been diagnosed with levels 2 or levels 3 on the autism spectrum. Because those are the individuals who need the most care and who are less likely to be able to live independently from their families. The average state only has a couple of group home facilities for higher functioning autistic adults. The owners of Hope's Haven have chosen Wisconsin because there is a limited amount of programs in Wisconsin for severely autistic individuals. Wisconsin currently has no facility specifically for levels 2 or level 3 autistic adults. Most buildings are not designed with autistic individuals in mind. Autistic individuals have a sensitivity to their environment. These sensitivities can sometimes be light, acoustical, and even smell. These individuals also tend to respond better to environments that have more structure to them.
Hope's Haven will be renovating a school in Madison, Wisconsin. This school is located in a primarily residential area, which means that there will be less chances of exterior sensory problems such as sirens. This building is also located right down the street from a medical center, which will allow for more care for the residents. It is also very closely located to the Ice Age Trail, which is a large walking trail in Wisconsin. The original building is two stories and has clear distinctions between public and private spaces. This building's architecture begins to build out the villages for the residents. Overall, this building is less institutional than typical living facilities, which is why the ownership group selected it. Hope's Haven has two main building types, I-2 as a living facility and I-4 as an adult day program. This living facility will be for the residents who live there full time and have 24-hour staff. The adult day program will function more like a regular school and will be open during business hours with staff that work specifically in that part of the facility. The goal of this design is to change the definition of independence. I want to create a building where autistic adults can be independent in their own unique way. This is my project design concept. The building will be broken down into six unique villages per floor, allowing for residents to create a home environment. The chosen aesthetics will create an overall timeless transitional design. Each village will have their own unique color scheme and design elements to aid with wayfinding and to create individuality. The transitional aesthetic will connect throughout the entire building to create a harmonious design. The main floor plan of Hope's Haven has a main central core and a wing on each side. The main core houses rooms that non-caretaker staff would utilize, and it also houses two exam rooms and a doctor's office so that the on-site doctors and nurses have a private and sterilized environment for resident care. Each wing is a pod that houses three villages and has a horseshoe-shaped circulation. In addition, in the back, portion of the building on the first level will be utilized as the adult day program. The pods and the adult day program all have classrooms and activity spaces, lounges, dining rooms, nurses, touchdown stations, and medicine rooms. Cool down rooms were also designed into any space residents would be for a long period of time.
There are two pods on each floor, which equals four pods in the building that houses all the residents. Each pod has its own unique color scheme to allow the residents to understand the difference and give them the independence to understand where they are in each part of the building. Here is an example of two pods of the building and how their colors differentiate their locations. Here is an example of a large village in the waterfront pod. The floor plan of this village is shown on the left and the main materials are shown on the top right hand side. The nurses' touchdown and medicine room are located alongside the dining room so that the staff have the ability to easily administer medicine during mealtimes. This is shown in the right-hand bottom rendering with the frosted window. There are two main lounges on each end of the corridor to help encourage interaction between residents during the day. All of the fabrics and furniture frames that were selected are easily cleaned and durable enough to last in the specific environment. The frames in the middle are for the common areas. The lounge chair and love seat are used in the lounges at the ends of the corridors, and the stationary rocker and ottoman are used in the lounge space in the middle of the corridor. Although these fabrics utilize pattern and color, they do it in a subtle way to create a beautiful and homelike environment that won't overstimulate the residents. Taking this with me to the bathroom so I can pee. I just want to be done, dude, okay? Here are two larger renderings of the waterfront pod. The top left-hand rendering is of the dining space. It features a soffit with accent paint and the surface-mounted decorative fixtures. The rendering on the bottom shows one of the end lounges with the lounge chairs and love seats that have decorative back pillow fabrics. Within each pod, there is one large activity space. This means that there are four large activity spaces throughout the building. All of these spaces are designed to help promote interaction between residents of different villages and pods in a structured environment. 
The theater can be used for movie nights and other activities for the residents. The bowling alley will be simulated through Wii Bowling and allows for residents to have fun and play. The multi-sensory room is designed to allow residents to have a variety of stimulants around them at once. This room features bubble tubes that go up from the floor to the ceiling and are illuminated from the interior. There are also sconces with fiber optic cables that the residents have the ability to play with and experience. The game room can host larger activities than what the activity spaces in each pod can host, and it is also equipped to larger tables. What do you do? The rendering on the top left-hand side is of the bowling alley. This space will have TV screens that have Wii attached to them. There are also faux bowling pins and artwork to add to the bowling environment. The rendering on the bottom right is of the theater. There are two accent walls of the theater that both have sconces to create a more hospitality and theater-like aesthetic. There is also a projector in this room to be used for movies. The rendering on the top left is of the multi-sensory room. This room has sensory panels on the left side wall, a crash pad whoa, in the whoa. back right corner, and recliners that are separated by privacy curtains. The fiber optic sconces are located where the recliners are. The bottom right rendering is of the large game room. This room has fun artwork and plenty of storage and space for any games that the residents might want to play. Here is the adult day program. The space plan for the two focal rooms is at the bottom of the page, oh, and the main materials are on the top left. The library is on the left side of the space plan, and the activity space is on the right-hand side. These spaces are visually divided by bookshelves. The activity space is designed to be utilized for games and activities, and the library is meant to be utilized as a lounge. Within the activity space, there is a custom table that I designed with surface works. This is a flip top table that also has a leaf. This unique table allows for individuals to work by themselves if they are having a bad day without having to be moved to another location. The activity space utilizes a very lively colored stripe because this space is meant to have more activity. The library utilizes three different types of casual seating so that people can sit in a space and piece of furniture that best fits them. The yellow floral fabric in the top right will be used throughout the backs of the chairs within the library.
Here are two larger renderings of the two spaces I just highlighted from the Adult Day program. These spaces utilize a lot of natural light and it helps highlight the openness of this large space. Last time it happened though, I drove him into the cave. I truly believe that if a facility of this caliber existed, severely autistic adults would have the chance to live in a space that helps them in all aspects of their lives. I would like to thank you very much for your time and feel free to email me if you have any questions.